As I mentioned at the beginning of our Mass today, something very, very serious has happened. And so I'm going to be reading to you a letter from Bishop Ricken. All the bishops of this country have written letters and they are to be read in all of the parishes of this country. So obviously something very serious has happened. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I write to you concerning an alarming and serious matter that negatively impacts the church in the United States directly and that strikes at the fundamental right to religious liberty for all citizens of any faith. The federal government, which claims to be of, by, and for the people, has just dealt a heavy blow to almost a quarter of those people the Catholic population, and to the millions more who are served by the Catholic faithful. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services announced last week that almost all employers, including Catholic employers, will be forced to offer their employees health coverage that includes sterilization, abortion-inducing drugs, and contraception. Almost all health insurers will be forced to include those services in the health policies they write. And almost all individuals will be forced to buy that coverage as part of their policies. In so ruling, the administration has cast aside the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, denying to Catholics our nation's first and foremost most fundamental freedom, that of religious liberty. This blatant disregard for our religious values is difficult to reconcile with this administration's earlier assurance, my quote, lie, unquote, that they would provide for robust conscience protection for religious groups in health care reform. And as a result, unless the rule is overturned, we Catholics will be compelled either to violate our consciences or to drop health coverage for our employees and suffer the penalties for doing so. The administration's sole concession was to give our institutions one year to comply. We cannot, we will not comply with this unjust law. People of faith cannot be made second-class citizens. We are already joined by our brothers and sisters of all faiths and many others of goodwill in this important effort to regain our religious freedom. Our parents and grandparents did not come to these shores to help build America's cities and towns, its infrastructure and institutions, its enterprise and culture, only to have their posterity stripped of their God-given rights. In generations past, the church has always been able to count on the faithful to stand up and protect her sacred rights and duties. I hope and trust she can count on this generation of Catholics to do the same. Our children and grandchildren deserve nothing less. And therefore, I would ask of you two things. First, as a community of faith, we must commit ourselves to prayer and fasting that wisdom and justice may prevail and religious liberty may be restored. Without God, we can do nothing. With God, nothing is impossible. Second, I recommend that you visit the usccb.org website to learn more about this severe assault on religious liberty and how to contact Congress in support of legislation and would reverse the administration's decision. Sincerely yours in Christ, the Most Reverend David L. Ricken, Bishop of Green Bay. This information came to us late in the week, so we were unable to put anything in the bulletin other than the letter itself has been stuffed in the bulletin, so that website address is in that letter. Next week's bulletin, we will put a plentitude of information of all our legislators, phone numbers, and web emails and everything as well. Um, I am willing to 
forfeit my health care because of this unjust law. I just won't have health care. And if I die early, I will die as a martyr then. And that means I go right to heaven. So thank you, administration. Maybe you'll do a favor for me. And I shouldn't be so light about that. But probably I will go to jail instead. And I'm willing to do that as well. This is a very, very serious assault from our government. We need to do something. We just can't say, well, someone else will take care of it. We need to do it now because a fundamental religious right that we have has just been taken away from us. The Bishop of Peoria, Illinois, has asked all of his priests to begin including the prayer to St. Michael in his masses because of this. Guess what we've been doing for a, quite a while already. So let us pray together. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And, O oh, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.